Alrighty, everybody, Steve here, and yeah, still a little under the weather, so the voice is a little off. So sorry about that. I'm trying to get better, a little sinus infection. But what we're going to check out today is the Harder and Steenbeck Ultra 2024. Now, you might be wondering, what is that? That's what this is. This is, if we can get a better picture there, is the Harder and Steenbeck Made in Germany Ultra Airbrush. This is going to help immensely when it comes to painting miniatures. And as I've got some guys here and got some little bigger guys up here. You can see that. Yeah, it's and that, this was all 3D printed. So, you know, painting these things, you can do it with a brush, but there comes a time where airbrushing is another great tool to use either with miniatures or models or things like that. Now, a long time ago, what I ended up doing, and I shouldn't say a long time ago, but when I was in Hawaii, I picked up this El Cheapo airbrush. And yeah, it's, it's definitely cheap. And it can work for priming. But as far as getting detail work or doing zenithal or highlights or you know some more detailed work this thing is horrendous and i know there's people out there who will say well you know you you just don't have the skills to do it um you know there is some something to be said that you know if you if you put a let's say a firearm if you put a a very low quality firearm into the hands of a professional. They can put rounds on target and they could win competitions in the whole nine yards. Uh, if you put a great gun into the hands of somebody who is not skilled, obviously they won't do as well as the professional who has honed their skills over a number of years. But with that being said, there is something about having a badly made tool with you know, obvious problems uh, versus having a tool like the Ultra 20, 2024 that is definitely machined to higher tolerances, has better action and so on and so forth, and it will make a difference. So with all things being the same, can somebody who's really good do some work with this? Yes, but can they do the better work with something like this? Absolutely, and that's what we're gonna talk about a little bit. Now, here's the thing, here's the disclaimer. I am not a professional at all. I've done a lot of practicing with this, but with this no-name airbrush that was super cheap, uh, we're talking like $30, $40, I think it was, and this is very temperamental. So following the directions for acrylic paints, using thinner, using flow improvement solutions along, this thing is, it is very temperamental. In other words, I can paint with this thing. The nozzle gets clogged fairly quickly. Uh, it will spurt and sputter. Of course, that might have something to do with the mini compressor that came with it. But from what I'm seeing, uh, yeah, this is very limited in what it can do and you know just taking it apart and feeling the the finishes on the product itself on on the important parts of the product that are inside it's kind of rough it's not as clean and polished as what we'll see on the uh <laughs> the ultra here so we're going to take a little bit of a closer look now this is going to be very different because I'm using two webcams. So I have the webcam that we're talking to you now where, you know, you get to see this and it's kind of hard to, to get, the, get the focus on there. But there's a number of great things about this airbrush that we're going to switch over and hopefully we can get some better coverage. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. So through the magic of editing, or not editing, but switching, boom, here we are. So this is the other. Here is the Ultra 2024 by Harder and Steenbeck. This is a great out-of-the-box starter kit. It's around 100 and I think I paid $124 um, and got it shipped from Germany to Korea where I live. And uh, yeah, it took a bit of time to get here. But even with that said, there is a huge difference between this versus my cheap one. And so that's what we're going to take a look at. So what I have been using is this no name, you know, get it off of Amazon. And, uh, 
the action is just kind of, you know, you here's the thing. With this trigger, you can pull it directly back, but what you're supposed to do is push down to activate the air and then pull it back to let the paint in. So you never just want to go straight to painting. Um, and being a beginning painter, I found this out early, of course, watching YouTube videos on how to paint. And you have to make a conscious decision to push down to release the air to get the air going. And then you pull it back to interject the paint into that airstream flow. So there's a spring in here that, uh, you know, adds that tension for that. As you push this down and pull it back, there's a mechanism which... You can see here that when we push this down and we can see that it moves that this section here which pulls the needle back from this point right here it's going to be kind of hard to but there's a needle in there so there's a hole in the needle and so when this mechanism draws this backwards it pulls this needle back so it leaves an opening here for the air and the paint to go out uh, through that tip so that's basically what we're looking at here. And of course, you can adjust, uh, you know, where this is on the needle. But the problem is, is that you can just go straight, pull it back. And when really you're supposed to go down and then back. So that's something that you need to be aware of when we're talking about uh, painting. Now, you can also adjust the flow, um, how much paint that you want by, you know, moving this little thing back here and for here back and forth to try to get the proper amount of paint and air mixtures so that you don't get spurts and sputters. Uh, the other thing we take a look at is the paint cup itself. I think this is like five millimeters. And if you look down here, you can notice that it's a very small hole down in there. And so mixing up paints and everything um, is kind of, and cleaning is kind of problematic. And when we take this off, I'll show you. Uh, it's very hard to, I mean, it's a decent amount of space in there, but you have the threads that can get clogged with paint. And so that's going to cause some problems uh, when you're cleaning this item. And of course, you're going to have to take the front tip off. There's a front tip that we see here that protects the, the needle end. You can see that little needle there. I'm sorry, it's not more clear, but this is the cup. And because this is enclosed, all the way around. The problem is, is that this can get clogged up pretty easily. So it's always good to protect the tip, but the problem is that it, it from what I've seen so far, is that it tends to clog up a lot more. I could take that other end off, but I'm not going to. But yeah, and then you have the threads down here on your cup, which, you know, can get clogged with paint and it's, it works. But the problem is with this type of airbrush, El Cheapo is what I'm going to call it, is that it takes a lot more cleaning. You can't paint as much or as long as with better designed airbrushes. So, you know, again, you can look down this hole and you can see that it's really small down there. Uh, now we're going to take a look at the Ultra and you'll see what I'm talking about. Now, the great thing about the Ultra is that it's machined in such, such a way that this cup, this five millimeter cup, and you can see it's got definitely a larger hole down in the bottom and it's not threaded in. It is just, it is machined to a point of where that's just put in and there you go. So that makes cleaning of the airbrush a lot easier and they also have micro cups that you can put on here. But when we look down here, what you can end up seeing. Let's see if we can't get that in there. But you can see that needle down there and it's a lot more area in which there's more more area in there that you can get in there with the brush and clean. And uh, yeah, it's just so much nicer. And just having this press fit on here is really, really nice. And it's machined to such a way, it's just, oh, it's just so satisfying. The other thing we want to take a look at is this tip and this tip has got to the point of where it's got holes in this tip where you can actually see the needle in there. So when we're talking about cleaning, there you can see it a little bit better. Uh, when we're talking about cleaning, because of those holes around this protective cap for the needle, it makes cleaning 
the needle in that area a lot easier to do and it doesn't get clogged as much as you would with like a El Cheapo over there. The other thing I like about this, the Ultra from Harder and Steambeck, is that it has this collar. So for the people that are new to airbrushing like myself, again we've already discussed where you need to push down and then back to activate. Uh, this one is set to where it's a double action. So if I try to just pull it back to the rear, it's not going to do that. So in other words, I have to put downward pressure and then I can bring it back. So I think that's a great tool to have is this double action trigger because if I just try to pull it back, it's not gonna work. So you have to push down and pull back and the action on this is a lot smoother than the action that we have on here. Now this action here, the spring is a lot looser. It's not as constant tension uh, compared to the Ultra on the 2024 here. Now the spring here is a little bit stiffer, but it's a constant tension, which is really nice because then you have to like, with, with the El Cheapo one, you have to like, okay, well, you know, I can, I gotta push it down and make sure I do that first. And then I gotta pull it back but the tension isn't constant, so you're kind of playing a guessing game when you're pulling the trigger on that cheapo one. Uh, the other thing I like about this is the distance of travel. It just goes down a little bit. I mean, look at that. Just to activate, and then you can go ahead and pull it back. Uh, that is a huge difference compared to the amount of travel, which is, you see how much travel there is there. It's definitely a lot more travel but this one is so much nicer and cleaner. Uh, the other thing that they have on here is this collar. Now this collar is really interesting because it just fits on and it has a number of settings on here. And as you can see, it's got some notches and there are different levels of those notches. So you can put that on there and you can have it go all the way out so in other words, if you push this down and you can go all the way back, but if you go to the first setting, which is prime, as you can see there, it's only going to allow the trigger to come back so far. And then the next one is base and it's going to go, you know, less and then less. And then you have three and then you have setting two and then you have one uh, for some really good detail work. So if you're brand new to this, this collar is a great way in which you can learn through muscle memory by practicing with this Ultra how far that trigger needs to go back. And if you're a well-experienced, you know, air, airbrushing artist type of person, you can always just leave it into the full extension all the way to the back so that you can take it back and freehand as much as you want, but you have a lot of movement or range of movement for that trigger to go. But if you're just starting out, and let's say you're just going to put on and prime your model, put it into the prime selector, push it down, pull it back, and you'll get a good constant flow which is really nice because now you're not being dependent upon, well, I need to keep my finger in the same position. Where is that position? This is an, a setting in which you can just punch and go and do your priming, or you can punch and do go in, in for your base or the settings of three, two, and one, and uh, which seems really, really nice. Um, for prime and base, what you're looking at is you're going to be about five or six inches away from the model that you are brushing. And then when you get down to like the two and the one, uh, get down to the two, it's going to be about that, about two fingers away. And if you get to the one, you can be about two fingers away from your model as well. Again, it's going to take some practice with this as well. Uh, it also has a quick disconnect system on here. And that's one thing that I forgot to order, so I recently reordered. But it does fit on uh, this threaded section on most airbrush hoses. So if you just have an airbrush hose and you don't have a quick disconnect system, don't worry, you can hook this up to most airbrush hoses. So that works out well. The great thing about the disconnect is that you can disconnect quickly if you have multiple airbrushes or even just for the ease of use in cleaning this instead of having to unscrew the hose, uh, this is really, really nice. 
So again, uh, the Harder and Steambeck Ultra 2024 is a really, really nice piece of equipment. And again, we can take a look at the, uh, the inside there of the cup, five millimeter paint cup, and you've got a lot of room in there. You can actually see the needle. You could actually pour your, your thinner or flow liquid into here and your paint and then mix it up all in this cup. Whereas I found with trying to do that with this uh, is very problematic sometimes uh, because the hole is so small and it tends to get clogged up. This thing spurts and sputters um, and trying to find that happy place of where to paint, um, it's really problematic because basically it's just like, okay, pull it back all the way and then we'll adjust using this because that'll move your, your trigger back and forth. But again, it's, it, it's kind of a guessing game uh, as to how this goes. And like I said, with this airbrush here, I've done lots of practicing with the dots, the lines, the squiggles, you know, trying to get full area, trying to get uh, de small detailed lines. And this thing is just, uh, the needle in this is, is kind of rough when you, you pull this out and feel the needle with your fingers. Uh, there's kind of a rough texture to it as compared to the needles that are with this Ultra 2024. Definitely machined to higher tolerances. And I think that's going to make a big difference uh, when we do paint with this. So there it is. And uh, it comes in this cool case. So you have the case itself uh, on the back. It has, you know, some of the things there. It comes with a 0.45 uh, needle head and uh, has clog control, which is, again, that front cap. It has a 5 milliliter uh, paint receptacle there. And again, it has a dual stage trigger that we talked about, and then that flow control rate by using that collar. And if you don't want to use the collar, you can always just leave it in the full open position. So I think this would be a great tool for new people if they're getting into airbrushing, because you can kind of use this with the flow control collar to do your prime, your base, uh, and get, you know, further, further into details. And then once you've become accustomed to that, then you can probably just take the, the collar off or just set it to this full open position. And then that way you can move this as far or as forward as you want and do freehand work. But I think for the people that are brand new to airbrushing, I think this is going to be a very valuable tool. So this is just a tabletop review of the Ultra 2024. So with that, uh, I think this is really cool. And it comes in a plastic case uh, that we see here. Um, just kind of Barney basic. It's got some of the inserts and in the thing that it comes with. Um, just nothing really spectacular. I mean, that's, that's all it is, is a plastic case. But it's nice. And it came all the way from Germany. Didn't have any problems coming from Germany to Korea. It just took a little bit longer than, than probably what you would experience in the United States. I haven't painted with this yet, um, but just feeling the differences of the trigger action versus the trigger action of this El Cheapo uh, is, is just night and day. This seems more highly refined and finished with constant tension than versus the spring that is here that is kind of like you can feel that it's, it's kind of sloppy. Uh, there's not a lot of constant, there's tension, but it's not as firm and constant as I feel on the Ultra 2024. And again, the other things I like just from painting with the El Cheapo brush is that needle protector with the holes in the front of it to allow and facilitate for better cleaning. Uh, the five millimeter cup here is really nice and it's got, you know, a nice size hole, easy to clean. No threads that'll get gunked up with all types of crap like I've had with, um, you know, my El Cheapo. This thing, after I finish painting, I have to basically tear this whole thing apart and cleaning the threads and the whole nine yards. And it's just kind of a pain in the ass. But comparing that with the Ultra, uh, this is going to be a great, I think this is going to be a really great starting airbrush tool. 
So we're going to do some videos and I'm going to practice with this. And then, uh, yeah, we'll make some videos on the Ultra 2024. So that will be coming up in the loop. I also ordered some quick disconnects for this to uh, just kind of ease of use with the Ultra. And uh, some other things that you might be wondering about this is that the Ultra can use different parts from other harder and steam deck airbrushes. So if I wanted to, this has a, what is a 0.45, yeah, I think it's a 0.45 needle on here. You can also use the other parts from their other products that will work in this as well. So let's say you like a smaller cup and you have like their CR plus or infinity or what, what are their, their other ones, you, they're interchangeable. Uh, especially with the needle systems and, and the end pieces and so on and so forth. So that's kind of a good news if you're looking to upgrade or if you're to the point of where you're way, obviously, way more of an artist than I am, uh, you have those options to change out the needles and to really fine-tune your work using this product. Um, yeah, it's it's just, yeah, made in Germany. I think it's like triple-coated uh, on the silver material that that is on the item itself so it's going to put up to a lot of abuse um, it'll definitely last a lot longer than my el cheapo which i've already noticed a little bit of flaking in some spots so um will this make you a professional airbrush artist no because that takes skills and abilities which yeah you just got to practice getting good at your craft but there is something to be said to having a crappy tool versus a really nice tool and just by playing with this out of the box and not even painting and feeling the trigger and all this stuff uh, this is definitely a lot nicer it's kind of like the difference between using a rock and a hammer um, you know or a rock and a hammer and you know a specialty hammer a framing hammer or whatever um, harder and steam bag has some really good products over the years but this is my first one and so i wanted to you know, find a good product, buy once, cry once. And it was like $125. There are airbrushes out there that are infinitely better uh, with higher tolerances, costs a lot more money. You know, I looked at $255, $300, $400 airbrushes. But as a beginner, I wanted something that would cover all the bases. And I wanted something that would help me with trigger control. And that's what that color does that will help me with that. And then I think... Even if I don't use the collar, I still have the ability to, you know, use the trigger as far as I want in personal settings based on experience. But I think for new people using that collar for, um, for the, uh, what is it, the prime, the base, and those three extra settings uh, will really help a lot of people. And it lessens the learning curve when it comes into airbrushing. So that's what we have. Uh, if you have any experience in airbrushing, uh, the next thing that I'm going to get, maybe not the next thing I'll get, but the next thing I'll get in regards to airbrushing is a compressor because I just had that crappy little compressor that I got with this crappy little thing. So if you have any recommendations for a quiet tanked uh, compressor, put it in the comment section down below because I, I'm trying to narrow down what I want to look for in that. And I'm kind of leaning towards more of the Iwata series of compressors, but I'm still looking and researching and learning. And uh, again, I think being quiet and with a tank is something that I'd be interested in. <coughs> All right, excuse me. So anyway, that is the Ultra 2024 by Harder and Steambeck, and we'll do some practice with this, and then, you know, eventually I'll post some videos and show you how this works and my meager skills when it comes to airbrushing, and I'll definitely let you know if there is a difference between using the El Cheapo one versus the Harder and Steambeck Ultra 2024, and that should be an interesting video there. So anyway, that's going to be it. Please heck, hit the like and subscribe button. This is going to be on Facebook Live originally, but I'm going to upload it to YouTube. So if you're watching it on YouTube, that's what I've done. So yeah, just maybe somebody needed that explanation. I'm not sure. But if you liked anything in this video, go ahead and smash the like button, do the subscribe, hit the bell and uh, see future videos. Have videos on painting, a hobby since I just got into hobby work of painting miniatures. Let's see if we can get this guy into focus. 
focus. There we go. You know, so, you know, looking at, at doing some different detail work uh, with miniatures, and this is mostly using a paintbrush. I used the El Cheapo to prime it, but oh, it's painful to prime with that airbrush. Uh, it's, I think, I think that'll make me appreciate this even more. So anyway, without rambling on any more, uh, hopefully you have a good week. And again, we'll see you on the next video. Peace. Good stuff.